I'm here back in the old cemetery of Harper's Ferry, where our series on this unique town began last year. And it's not for the irony of showing a cemetery and a healthy longevity conference. There are several reasons for using this historic site. First, this is an opportunity to say goodbye to this place, to Harper's Ferry as the site from whence we have originated the virtual conference for the last two years. We will return next October to Washington, D.C., 60 miles from here, down the river, to again hold an in-person meeting where we can gather to achieve even more than is possible in a virtual gathering. We may yet return to Harper's Ferry when there is a facility that can accommodate a sizable gathering of attendees from around the world. Secondly, this inspirational place also allows a good opportunity to announce that the name of the conference is going to be changed. You will hear more about that soon, but the reason for the change is to make the purpose of this conference crystal clear to everyone. This place does provide the best vantage point for viewing the geologic gap between mountains that were once taller than the Alps. Native people for millennia passed through this gap from the lowlands to the east to the rugged lands to the west. The gap remained a major passageway during the time of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, who loved Harper's Ferry for its natural beauty and strategic location. George Washington, during his second term as president, initiated the plan that led to the building here in 1796, the nation's first arsenal and armory. In 1800, Harper's Ferry was the gateway to the largely unexplored West. It was a natural staging outpost for the epic Lewis and Clark expedition. In mid-March of 1803, about two weeks after Congress authorized the expedition, 28-year-old Meriwether Lewis arrived in Harper's Ferry to take on rifles, knives, and other supplies. Lewis and Thomas Jefferson had designed a collapsible 36-foot boat referred to as the leather or iron boat. During Lewis's month-long stay in Harper's Ferry, he supervised the construction of the collapsible boat, but time did not allow for it to be tested. Clark went on to Pittsburgh, where the larger keel boat used for the first year of the journey was built. The boat was completed on August 31st, and almost immediately, the expedition was launched. Lewis and his crew sailed down the Ohio River to meet up with Clark near Louisville, Kentucky. From there, the expedition set off on an epic adventure that compares in audacity and danger to the voyages of Magellan and De Soto. The goals of the expedition were to explore the vast territory acquired from France by the Louisiana Purchase and to find trade routes and establish U.S. control over the expanse of land from Louisiana to the Pacific Northwest. The expedition was plagued by infections and injuries, attacks from Native Americans, loss of equipment, brutal weather, and forbidding terrain. Most of the 4,000 mile journey was made on foot. Amazingly, all the original explorers survived the journey. By the way, the first trial of the iron boat did not occur until around the Great Falls of the Missouri River. Sadly, the assembled boat leaked badly and could not stay afloat. The boat was abandoned to the river and lost to history. But Harper's Ferry remains as a chapter in the story.
Though our Moonshot project to slow the aging process and increase healthy longevity does not carry the physical danger of the Lewis and Clark expedition. In some ways, the challenges are just as great. The path is very long, the difficulties are faced every day, experiments fail, and the progress is slow and unpredictable. Just as there was a whole nation that benefited from the Lewis and Clark expedition. Only a few explorers were involved. Likewise, for our Moonshot Project, which can benefit all humankind, those on this mission, scientists, policymakers, developers, investors, and others, are relatively few. But as the great anthropologist Margaret Mead said, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has.